world. Good. Well, I guess now we just wait. Yeah. Gary. The thing is, I think one of them may have caught a glimpse of me without my balaclava. What? Which one? It was the girl with long brown hair. Oh, damn. Do you think she could identify you? Yeah. The thing is, Gary, that this girl, the hostage, Joanna, and <laughs> myself, well, we've sort of decided to get married. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted you to be the first to know. Bob, we've been planning this for two years. Think of the dream we had of the future, the, the dream we shared since Mrs. Evans's class. Yeah, I know. And that's why I'd like you to be best man, Gary. <laughs> Bob, that's a really nice thought. <laughs> Joanna wants to buy a semi-detached in Hounslow with the ransom money. What do you think? Right, uh, let's see now. Uh, better get a cake. Um... in those uniforms. Oh, all right. All right, you can come. you to these eminent world scientists. Good evening, gentlemen. Ladies, I suggest we start straight away. Now, I think that uh, one on the scale should be this. <laughs> yes, that, uh, that four on the scale should be this. Wait a minute, Mr. Richter. We can't accept that. We think that four on the scale has to be more like this. Very well, very well. But in that case, six must be like this. East, then, and despite 
his long hearts, he's led a diamond. What will Seth do? He's got diamonds to the Queen, but so far he has shown himself to be one of the less experienced players in the tournament. Snap! <laughs> yes, I rather feared he'd do that. <laughs> Traditional logic does not suffice for mathematical either. Uh, as Frege showed. So, well, so much for the uh, historical approach. But clearly, today, it, it, it's much more interesting than, than all that would suggest. Oh, yes. Uh, it's very, very interesting. Uh, for, for example, um, if, uh, uh, if, uh, if this is mathematical uh, semantics, <laughs> um, then uh, this could be mathematical uh, syntax, see, which are always uh, in conflict, so we could add some little guns. Uh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> but obviously, it's much, much more interesting even than, than that. I mean, don't for a moment, don't, don't switch. Oh. <laughs> this week sees the release of a new book of poetry by one of Britain's most widely read, but sadly, most underrated poets. Bob Riley. Bob? Son of Brian and Sheila Riley, was born above a bookshop in the Hatfield of 1934. He did not, however, set pen to paper until the age of 45, when he was suddenly inspired by the approaching birthday of his nephew, Martin. You're growing up, you're growing up, in oh, so many ways. May all your hopes and dreams come true on this, your special day. <laughs> The move to Hallmark Cards was a major breakthrough for Riley. He scored early successes with You're My Special Nephew, You're My Special Uncle, I Hear There's a New Arrival. But always striving to push back the boundaries of his art, he soon began experimenting with blank verse and other technical devices. Roses may fade, lilies may grow pale and wilt. And e'en the lilac blossom loses its blossom after a while. But the stars in the sky, the thundering crash of waves upon the shore, along with your love. And here he left a blank where a name could be filled in. <laughs> Will go on forever. But it was here that Riley began his most epic work. The death of a nation. The apocalyptic vision of a man disillusioned by the policies of his government. Albeit subliminally, he managed to integrate veiled political messages into his work. My very favourite nephew, that is what you are. You're extra specially nice. That's why you're such a star. That's right, free market money tourism is completely misguided in the present economic climate. <laughs> but all the same, I hope you have an extra special day. <laughs> Production problems with Death of a Nation, which required a 15-page pullout and textual notes in each card, led to the cancellation of his contract. Bad reviews and an unsuccessful stage adaptation by Mike Reed further demoralised him, and the consequent breakdown of his marriage began to take its toll on Riley's poetry. A touch of bitterness became discernible, as this extract from his anniversaries shows. So, you've been married a year. It won't last. <laughs> Increasingly unfashionable, Riley refused to conform to the new vogue of musical greetings cards. He drank himself into oblivion, producing such bitter final poems as You're my least favourite uncle. Twelve percent of all motorists have a serious accident within a year of passing their driving test. And you're having a baby. Can you be sure who's the father? <laughs> and finally, 
after a lapse into self-destructive depression on the morning of May 27th, 1982. Riley was found hanging from a tree in Windsor Great Park. He refused to come down and later died of hypothermia. <laughs> Thus guaranteeing history would remember Bob Riley as an artist who doggedly refused to compromise right until the very end. things coming up. Yes, definitely no more of that mathematical logic history. No, 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 no. no, no. We're going to have uh, a competition. Yes, where you can win money. Um, money, yes. I'm, I'm literally uh, giving it away tonight in our free-to-enter interest-packed definitely no don't. don't. <laughs> tricky one there. He's not gonna get that with the rest. He's gonna need the extension for that one. <laughs> well, I must say, Eddie, that's the first time I've seen that happen. Please? All right. I thought it was you. Oh, hello, Colin. How are you? Oh, well, mustn't grumble, but probably will, eh? <laughs> Actually, Pete, I was wondering if I could have a word with you about something. But of course, Colin. Feel free. It's about the uh, Onstein cataloguing project. I've always said it'll give us a very real opportunity to take stock and uh, reassess the viability of some of the more marginally profitable items. Uh, but, well, I'm sorry to admit you've not been getting the sort of backup from us over at stores that you're entitled to. <laughs> and, uh... Oh, hell. <laughs> sorry, Pete. Uh, oh, there's no point pretending. Look, you're, you're bound to have noticed I've hardly been my old smiling self at work recently. It's... Miranda. <laughs> She's been having an affair. God, Colin, I didn't know. That's terrible. I really had no idea. Yeah, it hit me pretty hard. It's quite a relief just to be able to talk to somebody about it. But, you know, deep down, I suppose I've known for some time, really. And although she hasn't told me, I think I know who it is. Really? When I came to think about it, it was obvious. 
Ever since the company had that Hawaiian Aloha disco evening, well, you know, you were there, Peter. I remember Miranda commenting on what a magnificent garland you had. <laughs> anyway, ever since she's been working late a lot more, she's been out when I phoned to tell her I'll be working late, she doesn't seem to miss me when I go abroad, and, and someone at work would know when I wouldn't be around, wouldn't they, Pete? All the facts point in one direction, and I know, I just know it's Terry Nixon from Dispatch. <sighs> <laughs> Worked it out earlier, I suppose. Always the last to know, eh? This would have been a difficult time to find out. I'm going to be spending so much time abroad in the next few weeks. I'm off to the German division from the 14th to the 17th, and after that I'm in France until the 26th. Would have been a difficult time, Cole. Yeah. She told me last night she's going to leave me. He'll support her, apparently. Oh, here's my stuff. He hasn't been told yet, of course, but I think he'll find it a little difficult to refuse. <laughs> Now that she's expecting his baby. Moneypenny, who's been the same in all the films. And E is for except the last one she was played by someone else. B <laughs> is for the Bond, which is, of course, his second name. O is for the oof, which so oft he does exclaim. N is for the bloke who has his office next to M. Ha ha! D is for La Duane, which is the French word for custom. <laughs> A is for the actors who will all on. Well, half time here at the football. Band of the Royal Marines playing behind me there, as you can see. <laughs> World Squash Championships at Crystal Palace today, where we go now to join Harry Pallister. Yes, well, it's half time here as well, Des, and what an exciting match it's been. Oh, oh my goodness, me. Well, that's the first time I've seen that happen. <laughs> Fire away, boss. Now, that was a soft goal to end the half, lads. It's not every day that Workington Town gets to play Brazil. <laughs> it is difficult, though, boss. I mean, look, the ball's bigger than we are. <laughs> Never mind all that. I want you to go out and give it 100% Sabutio for the second half, right? Except... Ken. Ken, I'm gonna have to take you off. It's OK, boss. I can play on. It's probably just a bit of cramp. 
I can't take no chances, Ken. I want the doctor to have a look. I've arranged for a substitute. Everybody, I'd like you to meet Merv. Watch it, colours. But he's got a bat. Well, he's from Sabuto Cricket. Or it was either him or a German paratrooper. <laughs> <laughs> What are my chances, Doc? I can probably make you stand, but Ken... Yes, Doc? I can't guarantee that if you play again, you won't snap. <laughs> hey, did you hear that Ken's injury is pretty bad? It'll destroy him if he can't play. Aye, pass the soap. Here you are. For a time, Ken enjoyed the bright life away from the hard training of football. But as the fame faded, the troubles at home began. Ken, I want to tell you something. I've been having an affair. What? Just pull the curtain. You said you wouldn't tell him. Terry, how could you? Uh, hello. Tom? Oh, hello, Ken. You bastards. Hi. Uh, Is that Milford? Hello, lad. Buenos dias! Who took my place? That's the last straw. No, Ken, no. Ah! Oh my God! I think you killed him. Will the foreman of the jury please stand and give the verdict? Guilty. Ken Crowder, you shall be taken from this place to a place of execution, where you shall be knelt on. Right. That's all the beauty, I'm in naked. I've been into the bathroom and left the toilet roll hanging down on both sides. Great, let's go. A big hi then and welcome to our competition. Um, not only can you win money, uh, but you can also win big prizes. Carol, yes, you can win this fabulous clipboard uh, or a, uh, a boom microphone. Yes, lots of things. It, it, coming up later in our interesting two... Thank you. Thank you. And now a duet for piano composed by Johann Sebastian Bach with his son. Just want to dance. Uh, um. Behind me, Satan. Neither idolatry nor false icons nor shallow prophesy shall tempt me. I see. Fancy a fruit pastel? <laughs> it's a black one. <laughs> no. Suit yourself. Mmm. Then. 
Oh, look, it's a new jar. <laughs> you couldn't break the seal for me, could you? <laughs> no. Tempt me not with earthly goods. True riches are beyond your gift. Yes. But look what it's wrapped in. <laughs> Sir, we think the other one may have been a traffic warden. Past two. We'll miss the service. Right. <laughs> My eyes are open and I am blinded by the light. My ears are full of the sounds of music and native voices. I have eaten of exotic foods and drunk the fruit of the vine. Yet still, beneath my feet, I feel the sand. Having a lovely time. <laughs> that was St. Paul's postcard to the Romans. <laughs> Marry them! Or else! Yeah, we want the full service with everything. But the modern vows, those are our demands. Very well. We will all stand and sing hymn number 324. 324 is a trick. We want 365 or else! <laughs> How about 361? All right, 361. Hymn number 361. you man and wife but I won't until you meet my demands which are <laughs> you leg the church roof money to restore the bells another table tennis table a new hat for me an even taller one with purple bits a new font with flashing lights and a sign that lights up when a baby is christened a disco remix of Harry Seacom singing two four six eight highway <laughs> Just stay there. <laughs> you can have the money. <laughs> 